Starship's launch facilities get put through the ringer, Elon loses a few VPs, SpaceX throws a dart at an asteroid, and we finish with today's honorable mention. I'm Kevin, and this is SpaceX in the News. There were no active road closures this week in Boca Chica, but at the recording of this video, we do have a few scheduled for early next week for some possible booster test tank action. As SpaceX pushes closer to the first Starship orbital launch, Super Heavy first stage included, work on the launch facility quickens. On Sunday, the orbital launch table underwent some tests with its Raptor booster quick disconnects, and it just did some more venting today during the editing of this video. The outer 20 of Starship's boosters rely on this launch stand for startup, since they won't have to be relit for landing. The inner nine engines, however, are normal sea level Raptors. The booster quick disconnect was also tested. Lab Padre captured the mechanism moving inward toward the table as if to simulate mating with a booster. This device supplies the first stage with propellant and electricity as it rests on the pad, then quickly disconnects just prior to liftoff, hence the name. Starship's quick disconnect was also added to the tower's arm this week. Again, the QD arm will provide propellant and electricity, as well as stability during stacking with its giant claw. The claw is our master. The claw chooses who will go and who will stay. This is ludicrous. Covers for these QDs were also spotted on site for imminent installation. You wouldn't want them to get toasty from Raptor fire now, would you? In the long term, the tower's larger arms will be used to catch both stages of the rocket. But first, the ship needs to make it to orbit. During the first attempt, Booster 4 will do a controlled splashdown off the Texas coast and Starship 20 will do the same off the coast of Hawaii. That is, of course, so long as they make it that far, and if the FAA even improves it. Elon would consider reaching orbit on the first flight a major win. The next Starship Super Heavy vehicle has managed to catch up to its predecessor during this waiting period. SN21 appears to be just about finished with tiling and could stack on its lower half soon. Booster 5, however, is now fully stacked in the high bay, and even SN22 has begun stacking. If the FAA rules in SpaceX's favor, it seems like 2022 could be ripe for multiple orbital launch attempts with little downtime between them. Of course, the whole reason all of this is happening is because Elon wants to colonize Mars. And why not? It makes life more exciting and humanity benefits from the technological innovations such programs provide. Mars could also be used, in part, as an interstellar outpost. This whole thing was considered ludicrous by many back in 2016, long before Starship was called Starship, but since then, NASA and the military have gotten on board, and now professionals from SpaceX, NASA, and various institutions and universities are putting their heads together to prepare NASA for the first Starship Mars missions. They've written a short paper outlining their ideas. You can read it via the link below. Another SpaceX news, CNBC has reported that the company has lost a few longtime employees after the close of its purchase offer on Friday, which included Lee Rosen, Vice President of Mission and Launch Operations, and Ricky Lim, Senior Director of Missions and Launch Operations, as well as Vice President of Propulsion, Will Hiltzley. On Tuesday night, SpaceX launched NASA's DART mission from Vandenberg Space Force Station, so ultimately their space probe can boop an asteroid for the world's first planetary defense test. Zero. Mission. The DART mission on the way for humanity's first ever planetary defense test mission. The first stage flew for a third time and made a successful landing on the drone ship just read the instructions out in the Pacific Ocean. The spacecraft will make contact with Didymos in late September of 2022. The next mission on the books is Starlink. SpaceX is targeting December 1st at 6.20 p.m. Eastern for liftoff. And now it's time for today's honorable mention. The world's first commercial launch facility owned and licensed by a private citizen are fans of the channel, so for good taste alone, their team deserves recognition. Western Australia Spaceport is a polar and sun-synchronous launch complex located on the coast just outside of Albany, and aims to return sovereign launch capabilities to Australia in 2024. The country, slash continent, has not had an orbital launch since 1967. WA Spaceport specializes in small Earth observation and constellation replacement satellite launches, and will provide non-exclusive access to space for all who have the courage to pursue it. Well, that's all I have for you guys today. It's been good seeing you. Thank you subscribers for subscribing, likers for liking, and members for remembering. Yeah, I remember. You remember? I remember. Have a nominal Thanksgiving weekend, and until next time, Godspeed.